All right, let's look at part two, saving files. Um, we're gonna talk about the file system organization, where files, kind of where files are placed, and once you get them there, how to find them. So first of all, let's look at the organization of files on your computer. Um, files are organized through folders, and folders are a collection of files and or other folders. Um, and they're arranged hierarchically. In other words, like an upside down tree where the roots at the top and that root is your hard drive. And then the next level, and this is on a Mac um, and actually on a PC, Windows PC, it's uh, it's the same organization. Um, there's a bunch of system files, so don't fiddle with these system files. You don't need to be up there at this level of the file system. But one of those folders is users. And in the user folder, you have all the users for this computer. So all Windows and Mac computers can have multiple users. In this case, you can see my computer has Bobski and it has Connie. That folder with, is, my, is my top level folder and it's referred to as the home folder. Underneath the home phone folder, there are a set of common folders. What I, I say they're common because if you uh, start a computer from you, you buy it off the shelf and you turn it on, it will come with these folders, the desktop documents, downloads, and that sort of thing inside every user. So unless you fiddle with this, it should be that way um, right now on your computer. You probably can't see other users. You may be able to see, if you go to the users level, you can see them, but generally files are protected so that you can't see other people on their computer's uh, files. By the way, we refer to this as up. If I say go up in the file system, I mean go up a level. So let's look at the common folders. First of all, there's a special folder called desktop. And you can open a folder that looks just like any other folder on, in your computer, but Everything in that folder is also on your desktop. They're the same files. So if you go, um, and we're going to talk about the finder here in a minute, if you go use the finder to go find the desktop folder, you will see the same files in it that are on your desktop. So that's a special characteristic of the desktop. The documents folder is where most of your documents should be stored. Uh, you, Generally, um, there's really no other practical place to put them uh, within your user folders. So uh, you, you start at documents and you build a hierarchy underneath that. We're going to talk more about that in a second. Then there's a downloads folder. The downloads folder is the default location uh, where downloads from the internet go. So let's say um, I go to the app store and I want to download an app it will download the installer into the downloads folder. Or I go to my bank and I say, download my uh, statements for the uh, last year. Those will go into the downloads folder and your browsers, Safari, Chrome or whatever, and mail attachments get saved in downloads unless you choose to put them somewhere else. And then there's movie, mu music and pictures. Uh, those are obvious. <laughs> they old movies, music and pictures. Um, there is one note down here, and you'll have to check this when you uh, go look at your computer at your Mac. Um, if you have iCloud enabled, your desktop and documents folder are actually in your iCloud drive. The reason for that is that if you create a file and you store it in your documents folder, um, you've chosen for that to be replicated into the cloud. So it's available on other devices as well as being protected uh, it should something happen to your computer. So go take a look at that. If you go to your uh, top level folder, your home, and you don't see documents uh, and desktop, then they're in the iCloud drive. And you can switch that back and forth. Uh, we could talk about that later. So the Mac OS has a special app called the, the Finder. And you're probably familiar with this little smiley face um, from eight, 1984, I think. And that is the icon for the Finder app. And by the way, this is equivalent to the File Explorer in Windows. Windows and Apple Macs 
have essentially the same file system structure. I know we weren't going to talk about Windows, but uh, it's it's almost exactly the same because it's universal. And, and the Finder is the way to uh, navigate the file system on your Mac. Uh, and if you look at your dock, uh, it's always the leftmost position on your dock. And if you um, use this shortcut, Command Tab, and we're going to demo that here in a little bit, you can select the Finder, that's what we did down here, as being the app that's currently in use. Uh, and another note is that folders, if you double click on a folder to open it, it will open as another window in the Finder. And that looks like this. So this is my desktop right here. Um, and I don't have any other items on my desktop. Actually, I probably cut them off. They're probably over here. But these three windows are folders. If I close them, they'll just go into, uh, into the location where that folder is stored. So there's a special um, there's a special menu item in the Finder called Go, and this little demo here shows you you can go to lots of places. And then I there I said go to the desktop, and it brought up my desktop, which actually does have a lot of stuff on it. Um, it is helpful to use to choose the menu Finder, and then there's a special thing called Hide Others, which means that all the other apps will be hidden and all you will see is your finder. This is a useful way to kind of get rid of the distractions of all the other apps you might have open. And uh, we're going to demo that here in a second. Another way of navigating in the finder is this sidebar. Now this is a special part of the window. Every folder window has this and it's consistent. Every time you open a, a folder, and get a window like this, you will have a sidebar. And the sidebar is customizable. You just drag items over to the, uh, to the favorites. That There's a little, see that little thing there that says favorites? That's the category of items on the sidebar. And you can see I have a lot of them. And I do that because, um, let's say the SCTC volunteer folder, I access it very frequently. So I have it over here in the sidebar. And it should be noted, uh, you can also remove these by dragging them out of the sidebar. Uh, we're going to demo that in a second. You can rearrange them by dragging them up and down. And importantly, if you go to save a file or open a file, the sidebar is in the dialog, in that open or save dialog. And you can use that sidebar to navigate to where the file is to open it or where you want to save the file. Um, there are some other customizations in here that if you go to Finder settings, like you can turn on iCloud and locations and things like that. But for right now, we're just talking about favorites. All right. Once you get a window open, which is a folder, um, there are different ways to view the contents of that folder. And it's important to know that nothing changes here. You basically are just changing the way you look at the items in the folder. Generally, that's a list of files, or it can be files and other folders. Um, there's four different views. There's an icons view, a list view, columns, and gallery. And we're going to briefly uh, show you this. It's kind of a personal choice what you want to use there, but it, uh, it can depend on what's in the folder. For example, if you have a folder full of photographs, and you can see here, this is part of my genealogy uh, photograph collection. Um, looking at these with icons is actually easier than looking at a list of file names. Um, uh, similarly with columns here, it just shows you the file names and how you got to that particular location. Um, the gallery view is definitely useful when you have a lot of photographs. So we were talking about the different views. There's um, four different views. The first one, which I'll hold the command key down and tap one, is the um, icon view. And since these are all photographs, they all end up looking like photographs, uh, like what's in the photograph. And you can change the side, size of the icon in that view. If they were um, documents like MS Word documents, 
um, you would you would actually see the document itself a preview of the document the second view is list view and that's command 2 which we have here and that opens up a list of the file names and you can see in this particular case we've got name date modified size and kind this is sorted alphabetically by name I can adjust the width of the columns and I can add different attributes that I want to sort on so let's say um, I also want the date it was created which is different than the date it was last modified um, in this particular case they're probably all the same though because I've not modified these but then you can sort by those items by just clicking on them here you can see I've created I've sorted by the date modified um, 2013 was a long time ago and it sorts them either newest at the top or oldest at the top I find size is useful sometimes uh, in this particular case you can see these are fairly small files I'm sorting them by the uh, largest at the top or the smallest at the top so 19 kilobytes the next view is command 3 is the column view and the column view is useful for when you're navigating a lot of different folders for example here I might want to go through the 1940s and the 1930s um, and you can see that we came from this level of the um, hierarchy down here this is really useful if you have uh, a lot of nested folders and finally there's gallery view and gallery view is good for photographs uh, though it's not necessarily limited to photographs but you can see here if I use the arrow key it will leaf through the photographs and show me a big preview of the photograph as well as some information about it over here all right um, we've all gone to a browser like Chrome or Firefox or Edge or Safari um, when you download something the default location is the downloads folder that's in your home folder remember uh, with some browsers or with some options in the browser you can actually say uh, prompt me to tell me where to store this it, I have found it generally it's better to just stick with downloads uh, and if you need to move it later you can move it somewhere generally to your documents folder in the case of for example my um, my statements from the bank uh, I have some sub 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 folders in my documents folder where those are stored I just download them and then I move them by dragging them uh, to the to the appropriate folder in documents okay so let's run through a real quick uh, download from using Safari so I'm at the Longmont Genealogical Society uh, website and under the tools they have some uh, you, some helpful documents for you one is the fourth generation ancestral chart for example I'm going to right click on that because I know that that link opens as a PDF and the options that I come up with you can see here um, one of them is download link file so the it's implied that it will download it to the default location that you have set up in my case it's downloads so I say okay download and sure enough that's it we can go to the downloads folder and um, here it is we'll preview it and uh, that is definitely in the downloads folder okay um, similar similar to uh, browser you have attachments with emails and if you want to save an attachment move it somewhere useful generally somewhere in your documents folder uh, otherwise it just gets stored in the uh, downloads uh, it turns out with Mac OS mail it will always prompt you where to store it so this little recording we've got here can show you that I click on the save button I say save that it brings up the save dialog and I say I tell mail where I want to save it and there it's saved all right so let's say you're using uh, Microsoft Word and you want to save a file well save it somewhere useful somewhere generally in your documents folder in a sub 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 folder somewhere we're going to talk about file naming here in a minute 
Uh, here's a demonstration of saving a MS Word file. Let's say that I'm working on uh, this Microsoft Word document, which is a story about uh, a non-parental event, let's say, in my family, and I want to save it. So in Microsoft Word, I say File, Save As, and the Save As dialog comes up. Now, one thing you might see is this kind of dialog here. See this little disclosure triangle here? Um, if that comes up, it, Microsoft Word is saying, hey, I think you want to put it here. Well, in this particular case, I don't want to put it there. I want to put it in a sub subfolder below that. So hit this little expansion uh, down arrow and it brings up that folder and all the subfolders. And in this particular case, in the Longmont Genealogical Society, in DNA research, in the Cotton Eye Joe folder, uh, I can then save it right there. Okay, so I just saved a file from one of the things we just talked about, um, but where did it go? Uh, sometimes you, you've saved it straight away and you've forgotten where you saved it. So there's several ways to find out. The first one is in the sidebar, uh, if you have this turned on in the settings, which it is by default, is a special item called Recents. And Recents shows you the most recent files that you have uh, modified, whether you've saved them or edited them or whatever. Um, you can see that these are saved over here by date last opened. So you need to make sure the view is the list, which is uh, the shortcut is Command-2 or Apple, Apple Command-2. And you make sure it's sorted by date last opened. Um, there's a similar option, which I call 1.5. Go to the Finder and using the, uh, the Menu Go, which we talked about earlier, there's a recent um, item in, the, in that Go menu. Once you have highlighted the folder, the file or folder, uh, use Command R, and it will take you to the folder that it's stored in. So that's similar here. If over in the recents, if you clicked on final logo name SCTC 300 DPI JPEG, I clicked on that and tapped Command R. It will take me to the folder where that's stored. Um, there's another option. You can use, reopen the app. Let's say you're using Microsoft Word and then go to File, Open Recent, and it will show you a list of files that you've recently uh, worked with. And one of those is the one you just saved. So reopen it and you will know where it is. You can find out where it is. And then the option three is to use Spotlight, which we're going to talk more about here in a minute. Uh, command space is a way of searching your entire computer for um, files and folders. So speaking of Spotlight, it's by far and away the best way to find things on your Mac. It's um, not only, well, first of all, the shortcut is command space and it's usable anywhere. Uh, anywhere, no matter what app you have open, if you command space, it will bring up that uh, Spotlight shortcut. And you, it will find items by file name and by content. In other words, if I have a letter that to my sister and I said, Dear Janice, uh, enjoyed Thanksgiving turkey. Uh, and then I saved that Word document somewhere and I gave it a name that I had absolutely no intention of giving it. It's unrecognizable. I can still use, I can say Apple space and, or command space uh, and type Dear Janice in there. It will find that file because it has Dear Janice in it. Now you can change, one of the things that bugs me about Spotlight is it comes by default, it will search everything. It will search the internet, it will um, have Siri, Siri help you search. Um, I turn a lot of those off. So if you go to system settings, uh, the Siri and Spotlight item in system settings, you can see that I've turned off a fair number of these. It's to reduce all the extraneous suggestions that it gives you when you search. I just want to find the file on my computer. Uh, I don't care that there's a file in somebody else's document somewhere else on the internet. 
So um, you might look through checking these off. All right, we've figured out where we can put files and how to find them once we put them. Um, the next section, part three, is about some best practices about kind of trying to declutter things and um, some file naming suggestions. So stay tuned for that.